Yes. At the same time, supply management, of course, continues to remain the key, one of the key sticking points. Joining us now from Calgary is Martha Hall Finley. She's the president and CEO of Canada West Foundation. Martha, good to be with you. Um, we're going to talk about supply management in just one moment, but I want to first get your reaction to the very latest in terms of the trade negotiations and Minister Freeland's visit to Washington, D.C. What do you make of it? It, you know, it's a it's a continuing effort. Um, a number of people have been saying over the over the last week, "Oh goodness, after G7, what should we do? What should Plan B be?" And uh, and our answer is actually Plan A. Plan A has all along uh, been that trade is not between Washington and Ottawa necessarily. It's on the ground. It's province to state. It's uh, even municipalities, certainly business leaders. So we've been encouraging right from the beginning that, 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 that this effort has to be on the ground. It has to involve everybody because at some point the business community, the economic community in the United States, and we are seeing some of that now exerting pressure on the White House administration it hasn't borne fruit yet. But, um, but that's certainly what the minister has been doing right from day one and doing a very good job, by the way. I mean, we may feel frustrated that we haven't made progress, but, um, but that, that effort has to continue. What do you make of the current situation between President Trump and Canada on the supply management side? Listen, there, there are five main issues uh, uh, on the table in NAFTA, in the negotiations. There's obviously dispute settlement resolution, there is the sunset clause, um, extraordinary demands in terms of the auto sector, uh, very much more onerous by American provisions, and number five, supply management. The, the thing that's so frustrating is that the first four are all things that are so important to Canada that we can't give on them. And, and I know our negotiators know that. We can't give and the U.S. is still just absolutely adamant. Supply management, however, is something that we've been advocating we move away from in Canada anyway because it is actually in Canada's best interest to do so. The problem is that it's now become a, a political football. We should not do anything with supply management because Donald Trump wants us to. We should do what we need to do in moving away from supply management with compensation, transition. Nobody wants to, to harm anybody, but it's as antiquated uh, a protectionist system that we may need to move away from. Um, but now, of course, people are saying, well, if you, you know, don't like Donald Trump, you should support supply management. Well, that's not nonsensical. Um, the other aspect of this is that when you have four issues that are so important to Canada and one that we actually could deal with, every negotiation is a negotiation. That's, that's the nature of the game, and so there's always give and take. If we can't give on those other four, and we can't, they're, they're so important to Canada, then isn't, isn't moving somewhat on supply management an opportunity, something we should be doing well, anyway, give us some leverage on those others? Martha, many would say that the supply management system is just as important as those other four items. Why do you say it is, and why do you say it's in, be in Canada's best interest to move away from it? Well, because economically it, it isn't nearly as important in the grand scheme of Canada's economy or, you know, social or economic prosperity. When it was formed in uh, the early 1970s, there were upwards of 140,000 dairy farmers in Canada. They're now fewer than 10,000. That's a 95% drop. Um, the system has evolved to a point now where Canadian consumers are spending hundreds of dollars more than they, than they need to. Um, it's amazing how we get so upset at, at bank service fees and cell phone prices, but nobody blinks an eye at the fact that we're spending hundreds of dollars more on, on basic nutrition in a situation now might have made sense decades ago, but we're now, subs it, it, consumers in Canada are subsidizing um, what is now a very small number of very wealthy producers. And it's so important to remember, the supply management only affects dairy, poultry, and eggs. That's not even 6% of the entire Canadian agricultural sector. Our beef, canola, grain, oilseed producers, pork, they don't get supply management. They're out there competing um, and competing in, in terms of world markets and benefiting from those. So why, 
part of the reason we say it's it's important to move ahead is that or the dairy industry isn't is actually foregoing some of those incredible opportunities in in terms of global markets. Why then, though, do you say that it did make sense decades ago just because there were more farmers? I would think if there's fewer farmers now, that it might make even more sense. Particularly if you think about food and food supply, as President Trump might put it in the national interest, national security interest. It's your food supply. It's part of your food supply. But, but so is beef, so is pork, is. so are grains, so are so all, all of those so things. Get rid of it so to say that so, so less why than get six rid of it in total, though? Why get rid of it in total if nothing else is be, protected? Be, because it costs everybody so much to do so. And frankly, if the average dairy farmer is now worth close to $5 million and the average poultry farmer average is now worth net, close to $7 million. I'm talking Statistics Canada, so I'm not making this stuff up. Um, why is it when decades ago we actually had challenges with so many tiny farmers across the country in, in some very in, in different issues in terms of a trade environment long, uh, you know, decades ago was quite different with, with significant price volatility. Um, that's, that simply doesn't apply anymore. It hasn't applied for the last few decades. The, the value of quota now completely distorts the ability to be productive, to actually put um, uh, that, that kind of capital to much better use. It's, it's, a, it's an archaic um, and, and really unfair system to, to all Canadians other than, as I said, this fewer than, than 10,000 uh, uh, dairy farmers at this point now. Why then do you think the government is so set on keeping it? if it doesn't make any economic sense to you. <laughs> I, to I, you. I, I, the, reason, the reason is politics. The reason is that the dairy lobby, the Dairy Farmers of Canada and their affiliates have now become over years, thanks to the fact that we've been paying such a premium, um, uh, well over $100 million a year on lobbying. That, that actually makes the Canadian dairy lobby similar in a very odd and un way similar to the National Rifle Association in the United States. I mean, that organization, they're not obviously very different issues, but in terms of affluence, in terms of therefore influence, um, it's extraordinary the lobby effort uh, being undertaken by the Dairy Lobby of Canada. All right, we have to leave it there. Good to be with you today. Thank you very much.